everyone, it's Penguin's Bite here with a new Scrawler Box unboxing video. This is June's box, and I hope you all have a good day. Okay, so I just wanted to start this by saying that this box is pretty interesting. It's the kind of box that, you know, makes you want to subscribe and stay subscribed to, scroll to things like Scrawler Box. Um, but we'll get to why that is, obviously, once I've opened it. Okay, so we have our usual lovely wrapped items and the artwork that you can already see. It's Carnage from Spider-Man. Alright, so you can already see the weird and wonderful pens that have come today. They're a little bit weird. I was taken by surprise. I was also pretty excited. I was talking to my sister at the time. And we're like, what are these? Um, I had no idea how to use them. But I was really intrigued. Looked at the piece of paper to try and, you know, the little card that comes along with it, which explains the items, and there was no instructions on it, but it did say what they're supposed to do, and of course, I'm super excited. So, you know, I kind of separated them by the different things that they were. There's three different kinds of items that came. So, you know, I kind of came to the conclusion that I kind of need to check out what these actually were. And yeah, um, little thief there, my sister, still in sweets. Okay, so after I watched some, like, videos on um, Chameleon's website, I figured it out. So, it's a large pen, which is split into actually two parts. There's the actual alcohol marker, and then the one that I've got in my hand right now is the blending chamber. This is just, you know, clear inside. Um, it's just a normal, typical nib. As you can see, it's clear. It, it contains the blending fluid. And this side of the pen is just, you know, your average alcohol marker. It comes with two sides. One is a bullet nib, a fine bullet nib, pretty good for detail. And the other side is, you know, a brush nib, which is nice because I was, I mean, I do like um, highlighter nibs, I forgot what they're called, white nibs, I don't remember. Chiseled nibs. <laughs> anyway, this one, the colours that I got um, were BK4 or Deep Black. RD5 or Burgundy, RD3 or Vermilion, and NU0 or Sand. The second set of items I got was basically a single fine liner, double sided. Um, on one side it had a 6mm, 6mm, 6mm nib, on the other side it was a 4mm nib. And now we've got the colour tops, that's what they're called. Um, in NU4, um, which is caramel, in PK4, which is peony pink, NG4, neutral grey, and then it was... BR5 or Bark. So the difference between this is, as you can see, the nib is actually dark in colour. Um, here's the chamber on the side, you can actually see that the nib is, you know, dark pink or you know, purple in this case. Um, so here are the two types by, um, side by side, one's from the main pen and one's a colour top. The ones in the main pens are colourless. So our artist of the month is Benjamin Davis, a Welsh artist. Um, his information will be in the description box below, of course. And the challenge for the month was Maximum Carnage, which, you know, I completely ignored, but you'll see that later. Um, next thing we'll be doing is testing stuff. Um, so we'll probably start with the fine liner. So here's one of the cartridge papers that came along with everything. It's 180 GSM, white acid-free paper. 
I started with the 6mm side to write test and then I changed it to the 4mm side to write page which you'll see in a moment. This fine liner was smooth, um, it was really fine obviously, um, the first pen, yeah, the first pen, the um, patterns I used was 4mm and it was thin, and 6mm was just nice and thick, so it was, it was a good two that they've given you. The first colour that I've tested out is Vermilion. The brush is very nice, it's perfect, it perfectly moves from thin to thick. And the bullet nib is very fine, um, very sturdy, very hardy. I liked it. Now, finally, we will get on to see how this pen actually works. So it's actually in two parts, like I showed you before. Um, you take off one nib, whichever you want to use. In this case, it was the bullet nib, and then you touch it slightly to the colourless nib. It creates a fuse. That's what coming in have called it. And then you hold it upright and you hold it for however long you want. So here we're waiting. Uh, I think I held it for about maybe 30 to 40 seconds. Could be longer, but it took a long time. I expect this to happen often. Okay, so we're gonna try and test it. You can't really see a color change very much on the nib, but we're gonna try it out. So as you can see, it's totally colourless. I was impressed by this. And as you can see, as I'm you know scribbling left to right, you'll see a slight colour change, and the colour, the true colour of the pen will slowly start to come through. It's basically zero opacity to a hundred opacity, depending on how long you hold it. Well, you always have zero or ten. Or 15%, maybe 20-30% if you know what I'm talking about, opacity is transparency. And you see it go to 100%, which is right at the end. So this is the brush side, I'm doing the exact same thing, just touching the tip. You want to be careful with the brush side, you don't want to damage the nib. And again, you have to hold it upright, so I'm going to skip this real quick and get to it. So you can see a colour change on this one, you can see it's lighter at the end. And again, little to no colour, but I didn't hold it for as long, so you see true colour coming in very quickly. A beautiful merge. The nib, if you can see, it actually has a little bit of streaking, but the brush, flawless. And obviously, as you can see, the fine liner that was given along with it is completely bleed proof with the pens. So the next colour we're trying is deep black, it's BK4. Obviously black is a really dark colour. Black is a really dark colour, so you know, seeing it pretty much zero opacity is quite good. Like it's, you know, obviously means that it's a good product, it's working. Sometimes some colours won't work as better in some items, like you know when you buy some products, you know, some colours don't work as well, but black worked, so that's great. So the third colour I'm going to is sand or NU0. And finally we're going to burgundy or RT5. I think that one's quite visible for streaking on the bullet, but you can see how the brush doesn't have that streak. So now we're going to get to the colour blends. The first one I did was um, BR5 to NU0 or bark and sand. So you choose the nib that you want and you use the other side like the blender um, and you touch the tips. Now I held this for about 10 seconds because it was really quick, you can see the you know the dark brown on the nib. So now we get to see how pure the colour is. Now it's solidly black, well dark brown as I expected, and you know it does come out 
to sand, which is nice. The next colours I'm doing are burgundy and neutral grey. I fused about, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds maybe. I did this twice just to see, like just to double check and yeah, around the same time. The next colour change will be caramel to deep black. I was really impressed by this because the black changed completely to the colour of caramel, which I thought was fantastic. I actually didn't think it would change fully to the pure colour, but it did. So Chameleon, really cool product. And, and another colour change we're doing is Peony Pink to the Million. Again, pure pink to the true red that's in the Vermillion. Okay, we're actually going to do a few more blends at the bottom just to, you know, mix it up, try some different things, see how easy it is, mess with times a little bit. So this one was a 20 second fuse um, with peony pink to sand. The second one was neutral grey to vermilion. And this one was bark to deep black and unfortunately, as you can see, you can see the real difference in time. This one was... Caramel to burgundy, and the final one was peony to black, which was a really nice blend. Obviously, dark to dark, you know, it's very subtle changes in colour, but with these pens, it's more fun to do really different colour changes. It's a shame that I didn't have any blue or greens because I'm a big fan of blue and greens, but awesome, awesome pens. Really fun to use. Anyway, so next we will be moving on to the drawing. You'll see how far off the challenge I was. Um, yeah. Um, there's no reason why I don't do the challenge, except that, you know, I suck at the challenges half the time. Um, sometimes I slightly, kind of casually have some sort of relation to them, but this one I just totally ignored it and decided to do my own thing. Um, as you see, I am using some of my own tools, I'm using a pencil to sketch out what I want to do first. Yes, the anatomy isn't exactly right, I have a really bad habit of drawing too low on the page and then losing space for legs. So yeah, the head is really big, isn't it? So now I'm using the Chameleon fine liner that comes with it. I'm starting, I, I used 4mm from the start. Um, I knew I was going to use a 6mm to go over it later, but just to kind of line it real quickly so I know where to colour um, once I've rubbed everything, like rubbed the pencil away. It just made sense to just use the smallest one and work on the lines later. Okay, so I'm about to start colouring with the pens now. I start with the skin. I'm not really sure what to talk about when I'm doing this, the actual drawing side of it, because obviously it's only drawing and you kind of get to see what's happening rather than me having to explain everything. Um, so if you've got any questions that you want to ask me about myself or about what I do or I'm drawing in general, obviously everybody's got their own style, mine's very stylistic, I'm still learning, I'm only ever going to get better. Um, there are people who are more mastered than I am, there are people who are less mastered than I am, but just shoot, you know, questions I'll ask them, you know, the best I can. 
and you know if you leave a comment like a question in the comments I will try and address it in the next video while I'm drawing so it's not so boring just watching the drawing happen one thing I have to say using these pens um, was even though what they do is incredible and I love them I think they're awesome um, I did find that waiting for the pen to blend all the time was very very tiresome I was sitting there for like 10 seconds to 30 seconds sometimes to a minute for big parts like big space like the skirt that one right now it took a long time to have enough ping to cover it without having that nasty kind of over powerful you know true color from the main pen the sand come in It took a couple of times going over it, which meant more waiting, you know, it's a little bit annoying, but the pens are awesome. It's just a little bit impra impractical to wait all the time. Just for small spaces, you know, it's pretty good. The more you use them, I imagine the more you know how to use your time. So for example, to do this bit, I used short bursts of peony to black, which made a quite nice natural purple which made a really good shadow. Another thing is because you have to hold it upright to have the best blend. Um, and it's faster for it to blend as well. Putting it on the side, letting it blend while you're doing something else is kind of semi out of the question. Unless, I don't know, you have like a test tube holder, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Or like even a pen holder. If you put it in a pen holder, it keeps it upright and that would help while you're working on something else which I didn't think of doing at the time but you know if I was to use these pens for drawing again I would definitely consider doing that As you can see, I'm using now the 6mm side of the fine liner to go over the lines to thicken them, give it a hard outline, and then go in with the 4mm side to just, you know, fix my lines a bit, clean it all up. I'm actually thinking of using my scroller box to do like a zine, and what I'll do is each time I get a scroller box, I will do another drawing, probably the same theme, so I'm probably going to go with, a, you know, a hijabi girl theme probably like a fashion hijabi girl theme uh, a magazine from it I probably will add some digital stuff it probably won't be a scroller box zine but I'll probably mention that you know half of the items half of the pictures in it are scroller box materials
Um, at some point, I do actually skip um, a part, of, <clears throat> a part of the drawing sequence. It's a little bit. It's not too far from here. And basically, I use white gel pen to add a pattern to the scarf. Um, I ended up actually going over one of the arms of the jacket by accident. I'll probably edit that out when I digitize it. But um, yeah, so I added like a sky star theme to the skirt as well. You'll see it in a moment. Um, but yeah, it kind of semi didn't record that bit. So when I say skip, I was lying. It was actually just, you know, I didn't record it. But I did record me doing a couple of stars on the dress, um, on the skirt, with a white gel pen so you see how I would have done the flowers, etc. It's quite simple. And yeah, I'm using some more, obviously, tools that didn't come in the box. So we're nearing the end of the video. Um, it will probably cut through to some gel pen work in a minute. So you'll see that. There you go, you can see the flowers and how they're on the jacket arm, and I totally mess that up, but you know, mistakes happen. If you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comments below, I'll try and include them next time in the next video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching!